Good evening, Bristol City fans, and welcome to Robins TV ahead of tonight's match against Luton Town. Both teams are yet to grab three points in the championship, and the City squad will be hungry to get the win in front of the home crowd and begin an upward form. And talking with me today in the studio, all things at Bristol City, is development plays coach Trevor Chalice. How are you, Trevor? I'm fine, thank you very much. I'm good. And are you enjoying this slight change in weather? Do you think maybe this will help Bristol City a little bit more today? A little bit of rain on the ground or, or are we better in that hot weather? Well, it was strange because um, yesterday we had rain for the first time in training and it did take a bit of getting used to. A few of the boys were slipping and sliding. Obviously, it rained today a little bit heavier. Um, did bring things down a little bit cooler, so hopefully mm. it will play a part in the game today. And what are your thoughts ahead of this match? I think it's a team that's been working really hard in training. I think it's a team that's been uh, gearing up and been very close in the last couple of games. So hopefully uh, the work that's been put on the training pitch over the last couple of days, I know they've been working really intensively hard, can be put into place to get three points today. Definitely. Well, we can head over to Toby Osborne, who has all of the team news for us for Bristol City, and then we can have a chat about that after Toby. Thanks very much, uh, Louise. Can Bristol City then get their campaign motoring tonight? It's pretty uh, grim conditions out here in Ashton Gate. Plenty of Luton fans have already made their way to their seats. But what has Nathan Jones done with their side tonight? Well, he makes two changes to the team that were defeated by Preston North End. No return to the stadium where he enjoyed so much success for Luke Freeman, unless, of course, he comes off the bench later on. He's replaced by a man who had less success here, but even more success scoring against Bristol City in recent times, Corley Woodrow. The other change comes in midfield with Gabriel Osho replacing Clark who's dropped down to the bench uh, Osho played a, a bit part role last season featuring 24 times he'll be hoping to catch Jones's eye again tonight no place for Tom Lockyer uh, he's uh, on the bench tonight the former Rovers man Jones seems to have settled on his back three with Sonny Bradley at the heart of it captaining the team today City will have to be wary of course of last season's top scorer Adebayo who partners Morris with Woodrow sat in the pocket behind them the latter two Two summer signings both arriving from Barnsley who were relegated to League One. On the bench Lockyer is uh, joined by seasoned pro Cameron Jerome who this season could reach a staggering 700 pro games. Nigel Pearson also makes two changes. In come Masengo and Wells, a definite need for energy and out go Williams and Chris Martin. Some serious firepower up top tonight. Andy Vyman already on four goals for the season. Can he make it five? He has the support of Conway and Wells in a bid to cause chaos at the back for Luton Town. A very youthful but enormously capable midfield of Alex Scott and Masengo. Then the back line remains unchanged. Some doubts are around Atkinson's fitness but he's declared fit to play tonight and then a small tweak on the bench with Cam Pring left out uh, this evening the experience of Andy King and Tim Closer among the possible replacements so let's hear from Nigel Pearson Nigel Luton Town in town tonight um, what are you looking for from your side over the 90 minutes <laughs> three points <laughs> is the obvious answer look we, we want to get our league campaign up and running with a win um, Luton, who had a fantastic season last year, um, you know, they they are in a similar position to us in terms of not recording their first win. So it, it should be a really competitive game tonight. A couple of changes for yourself. Obviously, yeah. Masengo comes into the midfield and yes. Mackie Well starts up top. Yeah. Talk us through those. Well, just that it, it, it's always about trying to utilise the squad. Um, I think Naki and Tommy did well last midweek. Um, yeah, and, and Han Noah, who missed out the weekend through illness, comes in for Joe, who was still trying to uh, manage. Um, so it's good to have quality 
uh, at our disposal to bring in and, and, and not feel as though we're doing anything other than giving our opponents a different challenge. I can imagine with Han Noah and Alex in the midfield, you want plenty of energy, but also the yeah. ability to sit on the ball and control the tempo of the game. Well, yeah, but it, look, the, the way that they're setting up tonight, we're, we're a bit undecided at the moment whether they're going to go with a, a one sitting dealing with Andy and two further up, which they've done recently, um, or whether they're going to uh, have a different approach. So um, it'll, be, it'll be an interesting game, and it's, it's one in which both sides are... Yeah, the, the, <laughs> there's an element of wanting to win the game, um, but also being tight as well. So both our games against Luton last year were really tight affairs in which I think we performed pretty well in both games. Um, and so did they. So it's, it, it's, it's always going to be a, a tight affair. And, uh, but yeah, we're, we're looking forward to um, getting back on the pitch and, and hopefully re recording our first league win. Good to see Rob Atkinson as well. Obviously, yeah. he came off at the weekend in the yeah. starting lineup off from the go. Yeah, and and and, and Rob uh, has put himself in a position to be selected, which is great. Tim too, who Tim was going to be going back home um, to be with his wife this week, decided to stay uh, because of that, which is you know shows his commitment to it's it's um, it's a group of players who are very much together, and that's. That's important now, but it will be important throughout the season. So, you know, um, we're just looking forward to getting out there and, and hopefully playing as well as we can to, to pick three points up. Well, Trevor, those are the manager's words there. What are your thoughts on that lineup and keeping TC in and bringing in Naki Wells and Misengo? Well, they play together a lot. Uh, they played under 23 football together, and we saw them build a good relationship when they went in and played at that level. So, hopefully, they can take that relationship into the first team environment TC's a, a great kid you know he'll work work his socks off he'll run the sides he can link the link the play with getting the ball into his feet um, and he's a natural goal scorer so hopefully he can get an opportunity in around the box and put it away definitely and are there any thoughts on the other parts of of the team and actually maybe Luton, Luton's starting 11 as well I expect them to play 3-5-2 uh, they'll probably match each other up mm. so it's all about getting up against your man 1v1 battles all over the pitch win those 1v1 battles I think we know what Luton are going to be about. They're going to try and get the ball forward early, uh, get the ball wide, cross it into their size and pound. We've got to deal with that. You know, we know what's coming and we've got to deal with, with those, um, those action situations. And it's definitely good to have Masengo back after he struggled with a bit of illness over the weekend too. It's quite a, a young middle there. Loads of energy. You yeah. know, Masengo, he brings energy. Um, he gets the crowd off their feet with his energy. And Alex Scott's got that X factor as well. So he, he can sit there, he can dictate the play, he can drive forward as well, knowing Masengo's behind him as well. So I think it's, it's a young, but it's quite an exciting midfield too. Um, and let's see how they get on together. And talking about your younger teams as well, they've done really well this week, haven't they? The under-23s and the 18s. We have. Um, the under 18s travelled to Burnley and, and started the season really well with a 2-1 win. So we're absolutely delighted with that. And the, the under-21s, they had a good result today. So they, they won 4-2 as well. Um, they played Hull and, and performed really well. Um, so we're delighted with the way things are going in both age groups. Definitely. And there any thoughts about the way in which we, we obviously need to get three points? How do we do that tonight against a Luton side who, is, or, who are also chasing three points? As I say, we've got to be really resolute today. I think mm -hmm. uh, a clean sheet's really important. I think we need to work hard to keep a clean sheet because as long as you've got zero against you, you've got a chance to win the game. Uh, so that's going to be the most important thing. Be strong, stand up against your men, win your personal battles. Uh, set place could be really important. Make sure we're organised, which we have been. Um, and then, and then sets us up then to go, to go and try and win the game. And having a home crowd behind us, hopefully making sure that they're happy at the end of the match too. They've been brilliant. They were great against Sunderland and I think the team will need them again to go and be as brilliant as we're against Sunderland and be brilliant against, against Luton. Definitely. Well, earlier our match day commentator ventured out of his commentary box to speak with City legend and FPA ambassador Paul Cheesley. Paul, uh, brilliant to have you here with us again tonight and obviously see so many uh, former players here as well. You've been part of uh, previous versions of the Former Players Association. So what's it like to see it up and running now? Well, a few more people have uh, taken advantage of the fact that people still do want to come here. And also Neil Palmer and Scott Davidson have got right into it. Patch as well, who's involved with the club. Many, many others in the background as well. It's fantastic. And it's lovely to be up in the sports bar as well. We're expecting Jeff Merrick, among others, and Gary Owens has just popped in. How nice and how much of a sort of community feel is it almost, seeing those, four, those old faces and, and, and spending time with them ahead of the game? 
absolutely brilliant. I just said, can we have a six aside later on <laughs> on the pitch? It might work, but some of us are too old, but it's fantastic. Everybody wants to come back to the club. They're welcomed by everybody here. People want to see part of the club's history, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And, and looking ahead to tonight, Bristol City's season so far hasn't quite gone to plan, but there's been snippets of, of good football. Are you optimistic they can get the result in the rain tonight? Uh, well, it, it depends how we start, really. If we, we get, go out with the attitude, I think we've got a great chance. Absolutely. And, and standout performance so far for you this season, obviously, Andy Vyman, aside from him, he's up and running and firing as he left off uh, last season. But any standout players for you so far? Uh, collectively, not too bad, but at times we've been a little bit lacking in places. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that'll pick up a little bit. The, the youngsters coming through the academy are doing quite well as well, so I think that matters a lot for the future. Well, Paul, thanks so much for joining us and enjoy your evening. My pleasure. Take care. It's great to talk to some of our older players and bringing them back and still making them a part of the club. I think a, lo a lot of former players want to be back in their own clubs and relive those memories. I think it's so important to keep that connection with the fans so they can see them walking around the stadium or they can have that chat with, with Paul Cheesley there with, with the ex-players. Yeah. I think it's so important to keep that connection um, with the fans. Definitely. And you're a former defender yourself. Is it nice to see a settled defence in the Bristol City side that, you know, that can bond and keep going and hopefully improve and get better and keep clean sheets throughout the rest of the season? You're right. It's the only way you can build um, connections with each other is, is, is by playing together. Is by, so you, they've kept their places together um, and hopefully they'll build those relationships with a with a goal starting with the goalkeeper into the back five so you include both wings back wing backs in them defensive positions so they are defenders as well um, and we'll need them to defend today as well as attack Jade De Silva and Mark Sykes it's important that they do the defensive duties and do them well today as well and actually Mark Sykes has come in he's been a really interesting player a new player that maybe we didn't expect to get off and running as quickly as he has he's been a bundle of energy um, I think he's a player that likes to get forward um, he could come off a line, he could go on the outside. But as I said, he's, you know, he's got to do his defensive duties today as well, especially when Luton going to be putting long balls on us and he's got to cover around his, his centre-back and do that part well. But I think he's got good energy to do that. And who else has been impressing you in the City squad? Maybe some of the new ones. You know, we saw Kane Wilson um, throughout pre-season really look like he was going to help us through the season. Kane looks like he's settled in well. Uh, as you said, in the pre-season game, he's looked really good. Um, it's a big jump going from League Two to the Championship, so, and I think he's probably won't take time, but he's going to take a little bit longer, mm -hmm. I think, to get settled in. But once he does, I think uh, the fans will be really excited with, with him. Um, obviously, Andreas Wyman, he's hit the, hit the season. We all know him, and he's going to be important today. His energy levels running beyond, tracking back, making tackles. You know, I think he scored four goals already, so he's, he's going to be very important today. Definitely. Well, we're hoping for another Vyman goal. That, that would just top it all off, wouldn't it? Just keep yeah. him a goal a game. <laughs> that'll, make, that'll make everyone happy. But we'll talk more about the City lineup and facing off against Luton after this short break. It's more than a game. It's my match day ritual. It's, it's a walk, walk to the, the gate. gate. It's me and my mates. It's nothing without our fans. It's the ups. And the downs. It's our young lads coming through. It's my dream come true. It's our club! It's a way of life.
When the red, red robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along, along. The robins, who this season have gone bobbing along right into the second division of the English Football League. in Bristol, you'll know that is the signature tune of Bristol City, the Robins. Welcome back to Robins TV for tonight's game here at Ashton Gate where Bristol City will face off against Luton Town and Trevor Chalice is here with me to talk through tonight's championship face off but before we chat more about our predictions for the match earlier in the week Matty James and Mark Sykes played a little agree disagree game which we may not have um, taken from a lad bible just for inspiration take a look at this now. Hi, I'm Matty James. And I'm Mark Sykes. And this is hard to argue. Andy Blyman is the best finisher in the squad. Oh, my writing is terrible. I don't know, to be fair, I haven't seen a lot. Um, I mean, I suppose over pre-season, I like Chrissy's finishing, and to be fair, uh, Tommy's finishing is quite nice as well. Obviously, Andy scored all the goals last year, but I didn't get to see them, unfortunately. Hopefully, he does the same this year. Joe Williams is the funniest man in the team. <laughs> I think he's. I think he's the daftest. Yeah, yeah. I, would I, don't agree. Know I think it's just because he's so loud. Yeah, he's just so loud. Makes yeah, yes. obviously as many jokes as possible. But he tries to make as many jokes as possible. Whether they're funny or not, he's uh, undecided. The away kit is my favourite city shirt this year. Ooh. Okay, Matty agrees. Mark. Yeah, I, I, I like the home one. I mean. It's obviously plain and simple, but it's nice. Um, there's not much of a, a I mean, difference in terms of the quality, but for me, I just prefer the home one. I really, I, I think the white one's really, really nice. I think, yeah, it's probably one of the, yeah, one, yeah, one of the best kits that I think I've seen so far, yeah. In the league, I'd probably say. There is a future top manager in this Bristol City team. Ooh, agree, both agree. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably say so. I think, there's, I think there's numerous players that obviously see themselves in a coaching role in the future, obviously, whether it would be a top manager, I don't, I'm no idea, but I think there's certainly people that want to go down that route. I think, like, obviously, like myself, obviously, looking further in the future would be something that I would like to do. Um, speaking with Nazi as well, uh, Kingy, um, probably the lads that are a little bit older, mm. are kind of thinking something after football as well and get your badges done and, and see where it's actually. I don't know what about you. Yeah, no, I mean, there might be some surprise ones as well. The younger boys yeah. also have an idea in mind that. They want to do something after they finish football. I mean, me especially, as I've got a little bit older, I've enjoyed the, the tactical side of the game and getting an understanding of it, really. So, yeah, I think yeah, there's there's someone in there, definitely. England will win the World Cup this year. One. I'm going to back oh, it. Cool. <laughs> I'm just going to go for it, yeah. Let's say it is. No, sure no. <laughs> for me, I think England just think they're going to win every tournament they enter. So, um, I don't know when the last time they did when it was it was the what 66 no so yeah. I mean they'll, they'll probably get there one day um, but I just don't think this year will be the one no I'm gonna have to say yeah 100 <laughs> yeah. percent we have to yeah yeah we have to yeah. we have to believe it don't we so hopefully fingers crossed yeah it'd be nice Mackie James and Andy King are the manager's favourite. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> nah, for me, looking on the outside, I mean, he's, they definitely are friends in a way. Um, they, they're the go-to players. Obviously, they've, they've known each other quite a while from previous clubs, but um, I'm sure the manager has a soft spot for some of the younger boys coming through and they're probably the golden boys more so than, than Henry King. I'll sit on the fence for that one, isn't it? That's <laughs> it is, yeah. No, yeah, no comment, yeah. <laughs> Well, we can rewind now to 1997, where Bristol City played Luton Town for a classic match, a Mickey Bell goal, a brace from Steve Torpe, which saw off the Hatters at Ashton Gate. And they're playing really very well indeed. Among the home side, Torpe with the header. They yet drop for Cram. Now, was he bundled over? Yes, he was, says the referee. Penalty for Bristol City. Alan White, the guilty party. And just the chance for that perfect start. Torpy's header wasn't the best in the world, but Cram was looking to get underneath it when he was suddenly tumbled from behind by White. And the referee immediately pointed to the spot. It's Mickey Bell. And it's 1-0 Bristol City, it is the start they wanted. And cool as you like, from the number three, used to be the number three, Darren Barnard, who took the spot kicks. Mickey Bell taking over the role in his absence and stroking it into the corner of the net. Torpy with the flick on, Cram there, almost released his partner. Goodridge, anything can happen when he's got the ball at his feet. Just wide, took a deflection, and a bad try from Goodrich. Dyche drills it forward. Bell had to change direction to collect it, but he's done so. And now he's found Tinian, now he can deliver a good cross. Torpy's there, and again, and it's somehow gone in. It's not the prettiest goal ever, but Steve Torpy won't mind that. And Bristol City and their supporters celebrate a 2-0 lead. Well, it was a super build-up which deserved a goal. Tinian's cross was perfect. The header was scrambled away. And somehow Torpy managed to just nudge it over the line at the second attempt. Valiant effort by the defender. Nothing he could do to prevent Bristol City going into a 2-0 lead. Cram, good flick on. Torpy appeared to be held. Still, Torpy goes on. And that's a superb finish by Steve Torpy. John Ward is off the bench, jumping up in delight. And that could well have been a penalty. But Torpy wouldn't be denied, kept his feet. And in the end, rammed it into the bottom corner. It's his second in the space of about three minutes. And Bristol City are really in the driving seat now. They lead by three goals to nil, and they're playing really very well indeed. Sometimes I love watching the old games. Is there a Bristol City game that sort of speaks out to you, even if it's in the last few years or, or 20 years ago, that you just remember vividly? Obviously, the one that sticks in my mind is the, the uh, League Cup game against Manchester United. Yes. Here. <laughs> it was a special night, you know, it was with packs. The fans made it special, obviously, the, the, the late goal. Was, was brilliant so that's the one that, that sticks in my mind yeah. actually I was a student in Bristol at that time and I remember just we all my um, flatmates we all went and saw it some of them didn't even like football but for that for that moment they became Bristol City fans and really enjoyed it definitely so what are your final thoughts going into tonight your final predictions um, I'm going for a clean sheet so I think the work that's been done on the training field I think we're going to be compact I think we're going to be solid I think we're going to um, uh, play with good intensity. I think we're going to play forwards. Uh, I'm going for a clean sheet and I'm going to go for a 2 0 scoreline tonight. Okay. So fingers crossed. Byman goal? Byman and Tommy Conway. Definitely. Okay, interesting, interesting there, of course. It'd be great to see Conway get on the score sheet and, and just show how much he's improved and, and grown as a player. Yeah, it would. I just saw his mum and dad walking up the stairs to the players' lounge and they're beaming the faces, you know, they're excited and. And fingers crossed that, you know, Tommy does, does not him with a goal today. Definitely. Well, it's almost time, Bristol City fans. Um, but this is what...